اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا صدق اللہ العظیم The section, last section of Surah An-Nisa in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the people of the book. It is continuing. And the discussion about Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam. وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ And there will be none among the people of the book except that they will have to believe in him before his death. This ayah is very important. Although people have misinterpreted it in many ways. But according to the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam will come again in this world. And all the people who will be present of the book, at that time, they will believe in him. Maybe some Jews also of that time will believe in him. But those who don't will, who will not believe in him even at that time, they will all be eliminated. Just as the nations who denied to accept the messengers of Allah, they were all eliminated. The people of Nuh, the people of Hud, the nation of Saleh, the people of Shoaib, the cities to which Hazrat Lut was sent, and so on. Firaun and his men, all were finished, all were eliminated because they didn't accept the messenger which was sent to them. Now Hazrat Masih was sent to the Jews. Rasulan ila Bani Israel. We have read it in Surah, Surah Al Imran. And the Jews rejected him. So they deserve the same punishment. Although this punishment has been deferred by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the second coming of Jesus. Because he was just lifted. And he will return again. And when he returns again, either all the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians will believe in him or they will be eliminated. So whosoever will remain, they will necessarily believe in him. Then you know death will come to him. This has been given clearly in hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He has not yet died. He was not crucified. He didn't die. He was not killed. So there is no question of resurrection up till now. Resurrection will be after death. Death is yet to come to him. When he returns to this earth, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ tells us he will marry, he will beget children, then death will come to him, and he will be buried along with the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in the same, you know, hujra of Hazrat Aisha. Ta'ala anha. So these are the things which we believe of the authority of authentic ahadith of the Prophet And to these things, this ayah is pointing. That is, every one believing in the books will necessarily believe in him before his death. And on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection, he will be a witness against them. Because this we have seen. The messengers were sent to the nations and they conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. But then on the day of judgment, in the divine court, they will stand up as court witnesses, as prosecution witnesses, they will testify, O oh Allah, the message that came to me from you, I conveyed to them. Now they are responsible. So this is the shahada which all the prophets and messengers of Allah will give. This is the testimony that they will testify in the court of Allah, divine court of the last day. 
فب ظلم من الذين هادوا حرمنا عليهم طيبات احلت لهم وبصدهم عن سبيل الله كثيرا تو مور تشارجز اگینسٹ اگینسٹ دی جیوز اینڈ بیکاز اف دی ایول ڈوئنگز اف دوز پیپل دوز جیوز ہو بیکیم جیوز حرمنا عليهم طيبات دس ٹرم جیو واز اڈاپٹڈ بائی دیم اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی گیو دیم دی نیم بنی اسرائیل But they adapted this word Yehud for themselves. Yehuda was one of the sons of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. And then actually they attribute themselves to him. So that is the term adopted by them. That is why Allah says, Allazina hadu, they became Jews. They became Yehud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give them this title. Quran gives them the title, Ya Bani Israel. فَبِذُلْمِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ حَادُوا So due to the evil doings of these who became Jews حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّبَاتٍ اُحِلَّتْ لَهُمْ We declared for them as forbidden some of the very clean things also that were already declared beforehand as permissible as a punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world He punished these people and declared something which were clean in themselves, which were not prohibited, which were permissible to be used, but they were declared unlawful for them. And this was also due to their stopping the people and they are holding back themselves from the path of Allah. Sadda Yasuddo, I told you, it means to, to hold back yourself and to stop the other. It has both the meanings. They held back. They didn't accept the faith. They didn't accept the Rasul. And secondly, they were stopping others, obstructing the way of the others from the path of the belief and faith. وَأَخْزَهِمُ riba. Another charge. They are accepting riba, usury, eating usury. وَقَدْنُهُ an, And they were forbidden from that. وَأَخْلِهِمْ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِرِ Another charge. Due to their eating... The properties of others, devouring, consuming the properties which were not be- belonging to them, which belonged to others, bil batil, through false methods, wrong methods, harab methods. And we have prepared for those of them who have now rejected even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Those of them who have now accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they believe in him, they have mended their ways. Well, they are among the Muslims now. But those of them that have refuted this prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَعَتَرْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ مِنْهُمْ عَزَابًا أَلِيمًا And now there is an exception. لَاكِنِ الرَّاسُخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ مِنْهُمْ Because from among them there were who rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the majority of them did so. But there were exceptions. A few of them, for example, Abdullah ibn Salam, ta'ala, he was a big um, alim of, of Yehud from the Jews, a big knowledgeable person, a big rabbi. Lakin ir rasukhuna fil ilm minhum. On the contrary, those among them who are well grounded in knowledge, who are deeply and firmly rooted in knowledge, rasukhuna fil ilm. They have the true knowledge and they are deeply rooted and well grounded in that knowledge. Wal mu'minun and these mu'mins who are believing in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila bin qablik. Now both they are bracketed together because they are believing in what has been sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila bin qablik. And also they believe in that which was sent before. The same words appeared again. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu, aminu billahi wa rasoolihi wal kitab illadhi nazzala ala rasoolihi wal kitab illadhi azzala min qabl. Lakin ar-rasikhuna fil ilmi minhum Now those of the Jews who had well-grounded knowledge, who had firmly deep knowledge and these moments who are believing in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Now they both believe in what has been sent to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and also on what was said before. Wal muqimina salah, and they establish prayers. Wal mutuna zakah, and they 
pay the poor tax, the obligatory charity. Wal mu'minun abillahi wal yawmil akhir. And they believe, have faith, deep faith and conviction in Allah and the last day. Ulai ka sanuti him ajran azima. So these people are those whom we shall give a very great reward. Now another very important subject, very important subject regarding the philosophy of Quran and especially the philosophy of the institution of prophethood and messengerhood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna arhayna ilayk, ilayka. Now this is the address direct to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna arhayna ilayk. We have sent our revelations to you. Kama arhayna ila nuhin. Just as we had sent our revelations to Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa nabiyyina min ba'dihi. And so many other prophets. To them also we sent our revelations. Wa awhayna ila Ibrahima wa Ismaila wa Ishaqa wa Yaquba wa Lasbati wa Isa wa Ayyuba wa Yunusa wa Haruna wa Sulaymana. Wa atayna Dawuda Zabura. And we sent our revelations to Ibrahim, to Ismail, to Ishaq, to Yaqub. And the, their progeny, and e, Jesus, Isa, Wa'yub, and Yunus, jo, Jonah, and Waharun, Wa Sulaiman, Wa'atayna Dawood a Zabura, and to David, to Dawood, we gave Zabur, we gave the Psalms. So this is a special, you know, mention of Psalms, because that is also one of the books of Allah. Torah, Zabur, Injil, Quran. So because that is a special point about Hazrat Dawood, so he has been mentioned separately. Now this is like a flower pot of the names of prophets and messengers of Allah. And you will find time and again in the Quran at different places, these names are enumerated, you know. Just like a flower plot, all these names come together. Inna awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila nuhim wa nabiyyina min ba'dihi wa awhayna ila Ibrahima wa Ismaila wa Ishaqa wa Yaquba wa Lasbati wa Isa wa Ayyuba wa Yunusa wa Haruna wa Sulaimana wa atayna Dawood Zabura. Now that point which I explained already. Wa rusulan qad qasasnahum alayk. And we have sent those messengers also whom we have mentioned to you before. وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْسُسُمْ عَلَيْكُ And there were sent other messengers also who have not been mentioned to you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now please understand this point. The names of the other messengers of Allah, prophets of Allah, if they were to be given in Quran, the knowledge of history and geography would have to be given first. If a Nabi came to China, what is China? Where is China? They, don't, they didn't know the history of China. If somebody had come in India, they didn't know the history of India. So actually in Quran, only the names of the messengers and prophets who were sent in the Middle East, this area. Because these people who were the first addressees of Quran, the Arabian peoples, they knew the history. They knew the name of Dawood and Suleiman. They knew the name of Hazrat Lut and Hazrat Saleh because they were all sent to this area in their traditions, in their literature, in their poetries. These people were mentioned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in Quran only the history of the messengers and prophets who were sent in this area. But principally we believe that to every region prophets were sent. وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٌ There has no, no town in which we have not sent any warner. إِمْ مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٌ وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادٍ To every nation we sent a guidance, a guider who used to guide to the right path. وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادٍ وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٌ So to every region prophets have come. And there has been, you know, a mention in the kashf of Hazrat Ahmad Sarhandi Rahmatullah Alayh. He says that 30 prophets of Allah are buried in that region of East Punjab. East Punjab, where is Sarhand situated? Where Ahmad Sarhandi, Bujadud al-Fasani Rahmatullah Alayh is also buried. He says in the nearby region, 30 prophets of Allah are buried. 
now this can be a kashf you know to a wali Allah. he can know it we can't know it these things but you know these people they have those those eyes which can pierce and see things beyond matter they had the faculty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to whomsoever he likes Hazrat Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه was sitting in the mosque and delivering his khutbah Juma sermon in Medina and you know he saw the battlefield in Syria and he saw that Sariya رضي الله عنه he was commanding the Muslim army at that time he was committing a mistake and Hazrat Umar tells him oh, Ya Sariya to ila al-jabal what are you doing you should go to their side you should take the protection of mountain you should keep the mountain behind you and Hazrat Sariya listened to his voice over there so now today if you can convey your message from here to Pakistan through telephone or, or something well these things could be done without these means now we can very easily believe in these things hundred years ago it was very difficult for people to believe but today it's very easy for us to believe by simple you know these machines and instruments if we can do it why can't Allah do it without the machines these things can be done so actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sending his messengers and prophets to every region of the world but we can't be sure there is an opinion that Mahatma Gautam Buddha was a Nabi and this is the opinion of Maulana Manadir Asan Gilani Rahmatullah Alayhi one of very big ulama of Indian subcontinent of this century the beginning of this century Manadir Asan Gilani he is of the view that Zul Kifl who is mentioned in Quran we know nothing about him no details only twice in Quran his name appears as Zul Kifl and he says he is Kapal Vastu Wala Kapal Vastu he was the prince of Kapal Vastu Kapal Vastu ka shahzada Kapal pe, P doesn't, uh, doesn't occur in Arabic it is changed into Fa to Kapal Kafl Zul Kifl Kifl Wala he is the person mentioned in Quran according to him but we can't be sure but you know we must believe that definitely in other regions also prophets of Allah have been sent messengers of Allah also came but only the names of this region were mentioned وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَسَسْنَاهُمْ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قَابُلْ وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْسُسْمْ عَلَيْكَ وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَقْلِيمًا and Allah talked to Moses as it is talked don't think it is proverbial. He talked to him directly in a direct dialogue. So that was special for Dawood Mahatena Dawood Zabura. And in the next ayah, because it is something special, even Muhammad وسلم, didn't have the chance to talk to Allah directly while on this earth. He had a direct conversation only on the night of ascent, night of Miraj. Not here, but it is a special point for Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam. He talked to Allah. Kallam Allahu Musa taklima. It's literally he talked. Allah talked to him directly in direct dialogue. Now comes this that ayah which I was referring that it is most important ayah regarding the philosophy of the institution of prophethood. Rusulam mubashirina wa munzirina le Allah yakuna linna se ala Allah hujjatun ba'da rusul wa kana Allahu azizun hakima. We have been sending these messengers as mubashirins and munzirins. Mubashirins, bearers of glad tidings. For whom? Who believe, who accept the faith, who do good deeds. They bring to them the glad tidings. Paradise is waiting for you. A welcome awaits you there. Jannah is waiting for you. Open arms, open gates. Glad tidings. Absharu bil jannati lati kuntum tu adun. Have the great, have the good tidings. And they are warners for whom? Who reject the faith. Don't believe in Allah. Don't believe in, in, in the messengers. Don't you know, they believe in the books. They are not doing good deeds. So this is the basic function of Nabi. No Nabi had the power to bring anybody forcibly to the right path. 
ایون محمد کوڈن ڈو اٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایون فار ہز اون انکل آل دو ہی پروٹیکٹڈ ہم ہی لوڈ ہم اینڈ ڈیفینیٹلی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آلسو لوڈ ہم دین ہی شوڈ ہیو بین گریٹ فل ٹو ہم آلسو بیکاز ہی واز پروٹیکٹنگ ہم اینڈ ہاؤ یو نو ہی ووڈ ہیو لوڈ دیٹ ہی شوڈ ایکسیپٹ اسلام دیٹ از وائی ایون آن ہز ڈیتھ بیڈ دی پروفٹ سیٹ ٹو ہم او مائی انکل یو اٹر دیز ورڈ اشد اللہ الہ الا اللہ اشد اللہ محمد رسول اللہ You only if in my ears you utter, I'll testify on the day of judgment. But he refused. And that is why Quran says, إِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَاكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ Oh Muhammad, you cannot guide anybody whom you like. It's only Allah who guides anybody he likes. This authority rests with Allah only. You are Mubashir, you are Nazir. These two words are very important. They are repeated so many times. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا كَإِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا Surah Bani Israel. Last section. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا كَإِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا In Surah Kahf, رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنزِرِينَ وَمَا نُرْسِلُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنزِرِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَا كَشَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا So Bashara and Inzar, glad tidings and warnings. These are the two main functions, basic functions. Le Allah, why? Le Allah yakuna lil nasi ala Allahi hujjatun ba'da rasul. So that there remains for the people any excuse, any plea against Allah after the messengers. What does it mean? When the messenger has come, he has conveyed the message of Allah. He has shown the right path. He has presented a personal example also. Now nobody can plead ignorance. Oh Allah, we didn't know. Nobody showed us the path. Nobody called us to the right way. Nobody told us what you like and what you dislike. How come you are, you are accounting us for, such, for something which we were not, not told? We shouldn't be accountable for those things which were not told to us. Although a human being is accountable on the basis of the faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. فَجَعَلْنَا هُوْ سَمِيَمْ بَسِيرًا We had given you the intellect. We have given you the heart. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا All these things. All human beings are basically responsible on the day of judgment on the basis of The faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. But now when Rasul has come, when a messenger has come, he has given the correct message and he has presented an example also, a practical example. Not only showed the path, he actually, he acted upon the deen himself and presented his example before the people. Now there can be no excuse, no plea on the day of judgment. رسول مبشرین و منظرین لے اللہ یقون لنا سے اللہ نہ وگین سی لام اینڈ آلا لنا سے حجہ النا سے حجہ دیر شوڈ ریمینز نو حجا نو ایکسکیوز نو نو پلی نو آرگیومنٹ ان فیور آف پیپل اگینسٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالی دیٹ از وائی آئی ٹول یو القرآن حجت اللہ او علیہ کا Quran is either an argument in your favor or against you. In the same way, shahada is against someone and in favor of someone. Shahida lahu, shahida alayhi. That is witnesses testify against someone and testifying in his favor, shahida lahu. Because this word will again appear in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Rasulam mubashirina wa munzirina li Allah yakuna lil nasi ala Allah hujjatun ba'da rasul. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيدًا حَكِيمًا Allah is ever powerful, all authorized. He could bring, bring you to book on any basis, but He is Hakim. He is the wise. He is all wisdom. So He has designed this system of Nabuwa and Risala that He has been sending His message of Wahi to so many people.
It's a basic thing about the accountability of the day of judgment that after these passengers have come, now nobody can plead ignorance. Now nobody can take the refuge that, oh Allah, I didn't know. You knew it. Everything was made clear to you. Even a practical example was produced before you in the person of the messenger. Rasulun mubashirina wa munzirina li Allah yakuna linnasi ala Allah hujjatun ba'da rasul wa kana Allah azizan hakima. لكن الله يشهد بما انزل اليك انزله بعلمه والملائكه يشهدون but allah bears witness himself with what he has sent down to you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he has sent down that with his knowledge it is out of his knowledge that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this book to you this is a part of his knowledge a part of his wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, has blessed you with. And not only Allah is a witness to it, all the angels are witness to it. لَكِنِ اللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ بِمَا أَنزُلَ إِلَيْكَ أَنزَلَهُ بِعِلْمِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَشْهَدُونَ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا And you know this testimony of the angels is mentioned. Although Allah himself is sufficient as a witness, he doesn't need any additional witness. But because it is a fact, this fact has been mentioned that all the angels are also witnesses to it. Inna lazina kafaru wa sadu an sabirillah. Verily, and certainly and surely, those who adopt kufr, ungratefulness, unthankfulness. Now, what should be the thankfulness when Allah has sent the book, Allah has sent the messenger? You believe in Him. You should benefit from the teachings. You should benefit from the divine guidance. This is shukr. And if you are not using these things, it is kufr. It is thanklessness, ungratefulness. In the ladina kafaru. And then they rejected the faith. They didn't believe in it. But saddu an sabirillah. Sadda again both ways. They themselves held back in not believing in it. And they also stopped others, put hurdles in the ways of the others also, that they should also not accept it. In the Ladina Kafaru was Saddu and Sabirillah. Now, this was the character of the Yahud. They not only they didn't believe in Muhammad themselves, they also were stopping. And they were exerting to their utmost that nobody should believe in him. They have gone astray. They have gone far astray. They have deviated from the right path. To a very great distance. Inna ladina kafaru wa zalamu lam yakuli Allahu le yakfir Allahum. Again, repeating those who have unbelieved, who have rejected this faith, and who are the evil doers, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not going to pardon them, not going to forgive them. Le yakfir Allahum, wala le yahdiyahum tariqa, and is not going to show them any path. Lead them to any path, illa tariqa jahannam, except the path of the hell. Now, this path is only open for them. Illa tariqa jahannam akhalidina fiha, and they will dwell in it, abide by it, in it forever, forever. Wakana zalika alallahi yasira, and on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is easy. Don't think it is very difficult for Allah to do it. Ya yuhannas, now. There is a direct address also. Up till now to the Jews, it was all a long charge sheet, not addressing them directly. But here for once in this surah also, now they are directly addressed. And in a very appealing way. Ya yuhannas, O mankind. Although these words are common. But you know who are being addressed here are the people of the book. Ya yuhannas, O people. قَدْ جَاكُمْ الرَّسُولُ بِالْحَقِّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Our messenger has come to you with the total truth from your Lord. فَآمِنُوا خَيْرًا لَكُمْ 
بلیو ان ہم ہے فیت ان ہم ایکسپٹ ہم اٹ از بیٹر فار یو بائی ان تک فرو اینڈ اف یو ریجیکٹ ہم اف یو ڈینائی ہم اف ڈونٹ بلیو ان ہم اف یو ڈس بلیو ہم فائن اللہ معاف سباوات اللہ سو اللہ ڈونٹ کیئر فار یو because to him belongs all the things whatever is in the heavens or is in the earth so he doesn't care for you wa kan allah aliman hakima and verily allah is ever knowing all wise ya al kitab now again ya al kitab includes both the jews and the christians but here really the christians are addressed یاد الکتاب لا تغلو فی دین کم ڈونٹ ایگزریٹ ان یور ریلیجن اٹ از دی چارج اگینسٹ دی کرسچن دے ریز دی لیول آف اے میسج آف اللہ ٹو گاڈ ہیڈ انکلوڈیڈ ہم ان گاڈ ہیڈ تھری ان ون ون ان تھری سم آف دم سے ہی از گاڈ انکارنیٹ سم آف دے اٹ از ون ایسپیکٹ آف گاڈ ہیڈ Three aspects of Godhead. But they have raised the level. This is ghulub, exaggeration. They have not denied. They have not rejected Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. That is why you know how much Quran emphasizes that Muhammad is messenger of Allah and his bondsman and he's a basher. قُلِ النَّمَا عَنَا بَشَرٌ مِسْلُكُمْ يُوحَا إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُمْ بَاحِدٌ ومن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا It's very important because people when they exaggerate and they exaggerate out of love out of love they raise the level and in the same way we Muslims among our those people who have raised Muhammad to the level of Allah And no less a person than a very great, very big alim. Ahmad Rada Khan Barilvi. And it is his couplet. Wohi jo mustaviye arsh tha khuda ho kar. Uthar pada wo madine mein mustafa ho kar. The same person who was on the arsh as khuda, as God, descended down in Madina. in the form of Mustafa. What is the difference between the Christian belief and the belief of these Muslims? So they are very close to each other. And it is Guluv. So this, is, this word is very important. Ya ahal al-kitab la taghlu fi dinaku wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al-haq Don't attribute to Allah except what is truth. ان نمل مسیح اور عیسب نمر یم رسول اللہ ویریلی المسیح جیسس سن آف میری is a messenger of اللہ وَقَلِمَتُهُ and is a word from him الْقَاحَا إِلَى بَرْيَمَا which he sent down to Mary وَرُوحُمْ مِنْهُ and is a spirit from him But each one of us has a spirit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yasaluna kaari ruh, kuli ruhu bin amri rabbi. Well, but there's a difference of grades. Gal hifze baratim na kuli zindi ki. Ruh of Muhammad and ruh of me or you. Je nisbat khak raba alam e paak. So actually this is also baruh min ho. Ruh of Hazrat i Masih alayhi salam is a special spirit, no doubt. But it is the spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلِ رُوحَ مِنْ عَمْرِ رَبِّي So that is the position. إِنَّمَ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Number one. وَكَلِمَتُهُ Number two. أَلْقَاهَا إِلَى مَرْيَمْ وَرُوحُ مِنْهُ فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ So have faith and have belief in Allah and His messengers. All are messengers. I don't remember, you know, fully the couplets in مُسَدَّ سِحَالِي مگر مومنوں پر کشادہ ہیں راہیں وہ نبیوں کا رتبہ خدا سے بڑھائیں اماموں کا رتبہ نبی سے ملائیں I don't remember the words you know but I am giving the essence if the Christians do it 
They are kofar. If we do it, we are mu'minin. The crime is the same. The sin is the same. They also did not reject Jesus. They raised him to the level of Godhead. And we also, out of love, extreme love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have raised him to that level. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ So have faith in Allah and His Messenger. وَلَا تَقُولُوا سَلَاسَةً Don't say three. Don't believe in Trinity. انتَهُوا Stop here. خَيْرًا لَكُمْ This is good for you. إِنَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَهُ وَاحِدُ Allah is the one. He is the only God. سُبْحَانَهُ وَيَكُونَ لَهُ وَلَدُ He is much exalted. Much above and beyond this position that he might beget a son. This doesn't become of him. He doesn't require a son. Why? Son is required by a person. Why? Because he knows he has to die. So his name, you know, will be remembered by the son. And then the son of the son. It's as if I am continuing some Existence of my own is continuing through my progeny. That is why we very much wish that we should have sons. It's a continuation of our own existence. But Allah Himself is never to die. He is there. He is continuous. Wallahu baki min kulli fanin. So He doesn't need any son. Subhanahu an yakun alahu walad. He is much above it, much exalted, much beyond this level that He may, might beget a son. لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي اللَّهِ To him belongs everything, all the things which are in the heaven and in the earth. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And Allah is sufficient as a protector and a guardian. لَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفَ الْمَسِيحُ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ Masih is not going to feel it a humiliation that he is an abd of Allah. Neither Muhammad feels it to be a humiliation. We testify along with prophethood and messengerhood. نَشْهَدُوا اللَّهِ إِلَّهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Rather the more emphasis is on عَبْدُهُ At so many places in the Quran you will find, you know, عَبْدُهُ mentioned, not رَسُولُهُ سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي أَسْرَى بِعَبْدِهِ لَيْلًا مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَق تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَزِيرًا So this عبد, عبد دیگر عبد ہو چیزیں دیگر مَا سَرَاقَ اِنْتِذَارُ مُنْتَذَرُ But I don't have time to translate this couplet. لَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفَ الْمَسِيحُ وَنْ يَكُونَ عَبْدًا لِلَّهِ وَلَا الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَلَا الْمَلَائِكَةِ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Even you know the angels who are very close and very near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't feel ashamed and don't feel humiliated that they are the abds, they are the bondsmen, they are the slaves of Allah. وَمَنْ يَسْتَنْكِفْ عَنِ بَعْدَتِهِ Whosoever feels ashamed in the bondsmanship of Allah. Whosoever feels that it is humiliating for him that he be, regard, he be regarded as a bondsman to Allah, as a servant to Allah. فَسَيَحْشُرُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ جَمِيعًا So Allah will gather them together before Him. They will have to come to Him. If they feel it to be humiliated, well, they will have the humiliation on the Day of Judgment. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So as for those who had believed and done good deeds, فَيُوَفِّيهِمْ وَجُورَهُمْ He will pay them their rewards in full. وَيَزِيدُهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Adding to them yet more out of his bounty. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ اسْتَنْكَفُوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا And as for those who felt ashamed to be servants of Allah and who became arrogant, وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا Then فَيُعَزِّبُهُمْ عَزَابًا عَلِيمًا Allah will chastise them, punish them. With a very painful chastisement, painful punishment. And they won't be able to find for them against Allah. This doon, you know, this can be translated in many ways. Except Allah, 
but here this proper word is against allah they will not be able to find any protector any helper against allah ya yuhannas now this is so to say the end of the surah qad jaakum burhanum mir rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nuran mubina o oh, mankind a clear sign and proof has come to you that clear sign and proof is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is himself a burhan kirdar mein guftar mein allah ki burhan allama iqbal uses these words for banda e momin kirdar mein guftar mein allah ki burhan to if a momin is a burhan bal muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the completest burhan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya ayuhan nas qad ja'akum burhanum mir rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nuran mubina and we have sent down to you a very shining light that shining light is this burhan is muhammad rasulun min allah yatlu suhufan mutahharatan fiha kutubun qayyima lam yakun alladhina kafaru min ahli alkitab wal mushrikin munfakkin hatta taatiyahum al bayyana and what is that bayyana rasulun min allah yatlu suhufan mutahharatan fiha kutubun qayyima here the rasul is burhan and the book that is the noor wa anzalna ilaykum nuran mubina we have sent down nuzul is for quran a light which is very shining very manifest light fam alladhina amanu billahi wa atasamu bi now as for those who believe in him who have faith in him who have accepted him as their leader as their guide as their mentor batasamu bihi and have clung to him who have believed in allah and has clung to allah hold fast to allah hold fast to allah believing in him holding fasting to allah holding fast to his deen holding fast to allah holding fast to his rope to his cable and that rope and cable is quran batasamu bi hablillah jamia and the prophet said huwa hablullah almatin according to a hadith narrated by hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala and in another hadith narrated by abdullah ibn mas'ud al quran hablullah al mamdud min as sama'i lil ard this quran is a rope of allah which is stretching between the earth and the skies and heavens and in another hadith the wordings are tarafuhu bi yadikum wa tarafuhu bi yadillah it is such a rope that one end of that rope is in your hands and the other end of the rope is in the hands of allah tarafuhu bi yadikum wa tarafuhu bi yadillah fa amma alladhina amanu wa atasamu bihi fa sayudkhiluhum fi rahmatin minhu he will make them enter he will admit them to his mercy wa fadlin and his bounty this rahma is for forgiveness if they had they had some shortcomings some bad deeds also the rahma will wipe it out and the fazl is the bounties of jannah so you will hold in rahmat from him and fadl and he will lead them to the straight and straight and he will guide them lead them ilaihi yahdihim ilaihi towards allah note it this is called suluk what is suluk what is tariqat taqarrub ila allah you want to be nearer and nearer and nearer and closer and closer and closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but to become closer and closer to allah you need a path that is called suluk that is called tariqat that is called sharia there is no difference between sharia share means path tariq means path this is only the two aspects of that path the legal side the external side is sharia the inner side the hidden side is tariqa sharia tells you how to pray and tariqat will tell you what should you feel when you are praying you are standing you have folded your hands you have gone bowed down in ruku you are prostrating in sujood this is sharia but you know your whole personality is bowing before allah you are really submitting do you really feel you are in the presence of allah 
do you really have a direct conversation with allah that is the tariqa so sharia and tariqa together the only difference is the external visible side legal side fiqhi side is sharia the internal the real essence the real spirit of these things that that is dealt by tariqa فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاعْتَصَمُوا بِهِ فَسَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فِي رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ فَضْلٍ وَيَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَيْهِ سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا He will guide them to a straight path leading towards him. Now the surah has ended. Only one appendix. This ayah, you know, it is the appendix. Ayah number 176. A question about the law of inheritance. Just as we had, you know, some instructions in the first section of this surah about women, about orphans, orphan girls. But there were certain questions about doing justice between the wives if you have more than one wife. About those also there were questions. Those questions were later on explained. Yastaftuna ka fin nisa kuli Allahu yufti kum fi hin. Now again, there was the law of inheritance about kalala. Some instructions came. Now there was a question. Yes, taftuna ka, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They want a proclamation and a pronouncement from you. They are wanting a fatwa from you. Kuri Allahu yufti kum fil kalala. Say to them, well, Allah is pronouncing, and Allah is giving you the verdict about kalala. Allah wants to remove your doubts. Or misunderstandings about kalala. In him, Rahul halaka, lesser lahu waladun, walahu uktun. If somebody dies, some person, he doesn't have any parent, nor any son or daughter. He is called a kalala. Now, if he has a wife. Wife will get one fourth. To whom shall three fourth go? <coughs> Wife can get only one fourth. To whom will th- three fourth go? To the brothers and sisters. They are called zavil arham, zavil frais. Zavil frais are only three: parents, father, mother, grouped together, and the progeny, sons and daughters, and wife and husband. They are the will for eyes. Their portions in the inheritance are fixed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in His book, in the second section of Surah An-Nisa, in very profound ayat. Only two ayat, and it gives the full law of inheritance. Now, if something remains, or in this case when there are no parents, they had already died. There are no children surviving. Maybe they were they died before the death of this person, or he was issueless. Now, if there is a wife, she will get one fourth. Three fourth will go where? And if she, the, the, the wife also doesn't exist, then who will inherit? The brothers and the sisters. Now, what will happen? These brothers and sisters will behave just as sons and daughters behaved in the law of inheritance. What is it? If there was one son, he would inherit the whole. If one daughter, she would inherit half. If two or more than two daughters, they will be equally divided between them in the two third. Such law was given in the beginning, and that is the same case for the real brothers and sisters. There, in the second section, the commandment was given for akhlafi step brothers and sisters. And I told you that in Arabic custom, when father is common. Irrespective of whether the mother is also common or mothers are different, they are called real brothers. They are equal in status, no difference. Although there are two terms, any, any are those where father and mother are both common. Allati, Allati are those brothers and sisters who have a common father but different mothers. The third is akhlafi, mother is common, fathers are different. Akhlafi. So, if they are akhlafi brethren or sisters or brothers, the law is given in the very beginning in the second section of Surah An-Nisa. But people were bewildered. What about the real ones? 
سو دس ریئل ون از گیون ہیئر و لہو اخت الفلاح نصف ما ترک جسٹ ایز اے سنگل ڈاٹر کڈ ہیو انہیریٹڈ اونلی ہاف سو اف اے سنگل سسٹر از دیئر ریئل اینی اور اللہ تھی شی ول انہیریٹ اونلی ہاف وہ ہوا یا رے سوہا علم یک اللہ ولد اینڈ اف اے وومن ڈائز وداؤٹ اینی اولاد وداؤٹ اینی پروجنی اینڈ پیرنٹس اینڈ ہی ہیز شی ہیز اے برادر برادر ول انہیریٹ فل ہول آف اٹ جسٹ ایز دی سن یو نو If he was alone, the only son, he would have inherited the whole of it. So if there is only one brother, he will have the total inheritance. If a sister, then half. If there are only sisters and there are two or more than two, then you know they will have two-third. Mimma tarak, or whatever he has left. And if there are brothers and sisters, both, فَلِذْ ذَكَرِ مِسْلُ حَذْلُ الْمُسَيَّنِ The same wordings with which this, that law started. يُوسِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي عَلَادِهِ لِذْ ذَكَرِ مِسْلُ حَذْلُ الْمُسَيَّنِ So if there are brothers and sisters, now the whole thing will be divided according to that rule that for each male will be the portion equal to two females. يُبَيَّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ أَن تَضِلُّوا Allah is making it, explaining it clearly to you, lest you should go astray. Although you could deduce it from there also. Allah had not gone into detail because you could use your own intellect to understand it. But because you couldn't understand it and it may be that you might commit a mistake. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that that order or commandment or instruction was for akhlafi brothers and sisters. For anis, for allatis. Where, where a father is common, the same law will apply as is the law about the sons and daughters. Anta dillu, yubayyinu allahu lakum anta dillu, wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. And verily Allah, Allah knows everything. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim.